Bear bets week two of the NFL. We are back. Jeff Schwartz and I will discuss all of the wagers that we have either made or are going to be making. Bets aren't good enough for us. They aren't going to be good enough for you. Jeff, last week we talked about how much we love betting on the National Football League. And sure, surely week one reminded us again of how much of, a, of an absolute <laughs> task and sure yeah. betting on the NFL is. Jets covered. Hey. Yeah, it was great. Here we go. Here we, here we, now, now, now we're going. Uh, bigger yeah, division, Super Bowl, AFC. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they covered at least, right? Good they, teams they, win. They, great teams they, cover. They, they, and the Jets covered. Cover. They did cover. Yeah. yeah I mean, their defense was great. Uh, the NFL is interesting, right? A lot, of, a lot of teams that were playoff teams last year lost in week one. A week two now, do you overreact? And, and, and do you hammer them? Do you not hammer them? Um, so a lot of fun in, in week two just because of, of what we saw week one. And the NFL proves each and every week, unlike college football, I think, that there's just there's so much parity. Everyone's trying to win on Sunday, no matter what your roster looks like. We we laughed at the Rams roster. And We're gonna say two 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 Atwell and yeah. uh, and and Puka Nakua reminding yeah. people of like uh, the Chargers with Charlie Joyner and John Jefferson. It, it was yeah, and so you know these teams that you think are gonna not not try hard or are the ones winning and the, the teams you think are gonna win big big favorites. Vikings lose at home as a big favorite. Uh, Seattle was a big favorite, lost at home, and uh, the one game we said stay away from was Giants Cowboys. Um, hopefully, people stayed away from that game because I think it was still no matter any way you went. Uh, it, it would have been tough to just to stomach that b- before kickoff. Um, so it was, it was a fun week one, though. I mean, it's what's what the NFL is. It was, no, it was good to see. It was it was good to see some of the stronger positions that at least I had before the year started, like kind of play out that way. Like I was, I'm big on the Browns. And they came out and their defense played great. We'll see if if their offense can continue to improve. I wasn't necessarily high on Seattle. But I did think they beat the Rams, but now that's good for the, the alt win totals that we we talked about. We wrote a column on FoxSports.com about the win totals that we like. Seattle under was one of those. And my San Francisco over Cleveland Ooh. Super Bowl is looking looking like it's a lot. The Niners, I think, came out of week one as the yeah. best team in the NFL, right? I, I doubted Brock Purdy because he would be an outlier, right? Just like Tom Brady. Like these guys that drafted late in the rounds, uh, late rounds have become superstars or outliers. I don't like to wager on outliers. But Brock Purdy looked dang good, didn't he? It, I'm glad. I'm glad the the league had an entire like year of film now in order to get ready to prep for the, for that offense and kind of shut him down, right? It was she really, really, it, really it, shut it. It didn't it, matter. Yeah. It did not matter. It, it at doesn't all. matter because it's, it's the offense. You just got to oh, not make mistakes. Correct. And Shanahan designs it up perfect. W- was there a team that you were most disappointed in, either from a gambling perspective or just overall? You changed your opinion on them after week one. Um, disappointed. In, yeah. Um. And not your Jets. No, 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 no. I would say it had to be Pittsburgh. Same. But, but, but again, is that just because they played the best team in football? I'm, I, so to me, the thing about the way the Steelers lost was they got out physical, right? And they got pushed around. Wouldn't expect. And each week you're playing, especially in your division, you're going to play teams that can push you around too. And they play the Browns this weekend in a situation when the Browns defensive line can get after them. Like, do, do is that is what they showed in week one just a, a product of we played a Niners defense, we were just not ready to play because we did not face anything like that in the preseason? Or is it a product of maybe I overvalued them, you over anyone else overvalued what what P- Pittsburgh can be? And week two this week will be a bounce back for them because I think they, they you know, there's a bunch of teams. Chiefs, uh, the Bengals, the Bills, the Steelers that don't want to start 0-2 in the AFC. Right, ton, ton of Chargers. Yep, ton of 0-1, ton of teams that made the playoffs last year that lost. And so mm-hmm. that, that's something where there actually was a uh, a tweet earlier in the week, I believe it was John Ewing from MGM. And again, we, we talk about people can debate trends, whether they're useful or not. But I think, I think this is kind of gets to what you were talking about with overreactions about how teams that lost week one of the NFL by, by double digits, like if you go back since like 2010, there's something like 62% against the spread yeah. in week two. It just goes to show kind of how the market may move in one direction as an overreaction, and there's value now on this team coming off of a loss. So it might be a good opportunity to, to buy a little bit lower than you normally yeah. would think this week on teams like the Bengals and Chiefs. Well, the Chiefs line, and this is the important part if you're going to wager like we do all the time, you got to try to grab lines when you see the best number. And I got Kansas City minus two and a half. So it's three and a half now. Like, so you, now I wouldn't take Kansas City probably at three and a half, even though I think Kansas City with Travis Kelsey back and Chris Jones back 
they're going to beat Jacksonville, uh, even though Jacksonville, you know, played well on the road against Indianapolis. But let's get to your bets mm-hmm. of the week. It's why we're here. Bears bets for the National Football League. I'm here to talk to you. We're here to get your your bets, though. That, that, it's bear bets, right? That's, that's why we're here. Uh, the first one of the week will be the Commanders at the Broncos. Broncos favored by three and a half here. The total is 39. The Commanders, we know, barely beat Arizona in week one. They failed to cover as well. And the Broncos lost by one to the Las Vegas Raiders. Who do you got here? All, all the excitement about Sean Payton and the redemption story of Russell Wilson. You come out and you, you miss an extra point and you lose to the, the Raiders. At, at home. That's a very, that was a very like New York Raiders. Yeah, that was like a, it, was yeah. a that was my tribute to Chris Berman. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. NFL primetime right Ra- Ra- Raiders type deal. But but look, look at Washington. Like they did everything that they could to give Arizona that game. Yeah. And Arizona was like, no, no, you 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 take it. We're going to do something even even stupider. So I have no no faith in this in this Washington team. And now you're going on the road. And you're facing Denver, who is in that group of 0-1 teams, a team that had some expectations. Like you would just assume that just defensively they'll be able to slow down Sam Howell and that offense. McLaurin's still not 100. percent If you get, I, I'm not one of these guys who thinks Russell Wilson's going to totally become the Russell Wilson that he's been. I think he's been on the downward arc of his career for a couple of years now. But I would just think that at home now, you're laying three and a half, which I'm, I'm okay with that, that the Broncos are, are, are the right side. Because 0-2 here would be an absolute disaster. And if they go to 0-2, it could send their season in an absolute downward spiral. You bet on Russell Wilson laying three and a half. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> Good for you. Good not with, for you, not with the Not with the Legion uh, of Boom either. Uh, a, lot, a lot of faith there. I, the under 39 feels applicable here, right? I mean, you have a, a Washington offensive struggle last week against Arizona. Sam Howell goes on the road to, to face a Denver team that we know their defense is good, obviously, right? I mean, they've, they've had to be good for now, this entire Russell Wilson period. But Russell Wilson, if you pull up a stat line from this game to the last time they played the Raiders last season, it's the exact same, same stat thing. line. Exact same stat line. We saw... Um, you know, that that his inability, again, to just get in a great rhythm at times. He did throw the ball better on the run, but as the game got longer, got hit a little bit more, he kind of crumbled back to what we saw last <laughs> season. And my concern here is that Washington defense is really good. They're really good. And so, um, yeah, but this, this could be a 17-10 to 10 win for the Broncos, though, right? I mean, I'll they, take they, it. Like, yeah, on, on, yes, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Let's get to uh, Bears' second game here in the Chicago Bears at the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Bucks are favored by three. The total is 40 and a half. The Bears off a pretty big home loss to the Packers, who they, they never beat. Um, and the Bucks, a surprising week one winner. There were seven point dogs early in the week. I think that, that number changed by kickoff. Uh, they beat the Vikings last week in this game, is in Tampa Bay. Bears getting the three points. Who you got, Bear? I can't lay three points with Tampa. Like, like, that was one of those. You, you look at the box score of the Bucks win yeah. in, in, in Minnesota. Average three and a half yards a play. We're outgained by 130 yards, plus three in turnovers. Like, are they going to get a, a three over turnover, three three nothing turnover edge again? Maybe it is Justin Fields and a bad Bears, a bad bad Bears team. But you can't rely on that stuff each week. Uh, I, I think it was just more of a meltdown by the Vikings than anything else. No, nothing that Tampa did offensively yeah. tells me I want to lay points with this team. So this might be one of those kind of opportunities to. Buy low, and I want to say buy low, but kind of go against a team that might be a little overvalued on the line right now because they are one and zero, and the Bears are the Bears are zero and one. I would just think as long as Chicago doesn't turn the ball over, I would think that maybe feet, they can get a little more running usage, running the ball from from fields, and maybe the, the run game itself can, can can do a little bit better. But I, I'll I'll take the Bears at plus three here. I think anytime you can fade Baker Mayfield, it's a, it's a good option. And he's the favorite at home in this game. And, you know, the reason why there's a lot of value here is it's, I think that we both agree the Vikings were a little overvalued in week one. Yes. And so when they. You, when, you mean you're not going to go like 11 and one in no. one score games it every was, year? They were, they were 10 and 0 in the regular season last season, one score games. The one they lost was the playoff game. They were 10 and one. Obviously, and, and we talk about this all the time. People don't understand, I think, why we put a lot of value into this because the historical data has shown up. If you win a lot of close games one year, the next year, you don't win as many close right. games. They were 10-0 in one score Simple games. math. Uh, and so, obviously, this season, we'll get to the Vikings, maybe another show. But nonetheless <laughs> here, anytime you, you can fade Baker Mayfield, I'm, I'm all for that. The one concern I have personally about the Bears is, I think their offense is pretty stinky. And 
Is there a time to admit that Justin Fields might not be the guy? He started, I think, 26 games now. Like, we, we, like is, is that time going to happen at some point? I think back to draft night that year, and people are like, how is he sliding? How is he sliding? And and then when he gets picked, ultimately where he got picked by the Bears, oh, what a great pick. Hey, I, I'd love like to go back and like pull the historical data of the unanimous consensus. What a great pick. Because I have a feeling a lot of those what a great picks don't, out, don't turn out to be great picks at all. But yeah, it, it, so if, if they do go on the low yeah. road and lose to Tampa, I mean, there are places out there in, in the global market where you can wager on first coach to be fired like is, is ever fluce like in year two probably not after that after two losses early in the season but if you get to week 10 and they're two and eight and fields isn't any better certainly yes well that, that's the thing i think that's kind of wh- wh- where i was going with it as well like someone's going to take the fall and someone's going to take the heat for this and it's yeah. gonna, is it going to be like where you need to look somewhere else for our court like quarterback or is it going to be the head coach i mean I mean, there are, there are like, but if he fields is such a great athlete, like would, I don't think you're going to be like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to move you to wide receiver. No, no, tight he's, end no. Or, he, he's a quarterback. I mean, you hope my guess is they would do what a lot of these teams do is you hire Ben Johnson, the Lions OC, and who's done a great job with Jared Goff. And he, you hire him as your head coach and you say, look, man, fix Justin Fields for us. You know, right. Brian Dable hired by the Giants. Fix Daniel Jones. Right. Like, that, I think, is what they're going to do if Matty Rufus isn't the guy who's, who's able to do that. And that's a great point about, about Dable, by the way, too, because look what Daniel, look what uh, Josh Allen has been since he's no longer been in Buffalo. <sighs> Not good. Not good for the New York Jets as they go to the Dallas Cowboys. New York Jets are, uh, again, nine and a half points at the Cowboys. 38 and a half is the number here, Bear. This is your third wager of the week. And, uh, <laughs> ooh, buddy, uh, Jets, in, Jets in a bad place right now. Zach Wilson on the road against the Cowboys team that won 40 and nothing. The Giants 40 and nothing, Bear. Who you got in this situation? I'm going to take the Jets plus the nine and a half because I think we saw Monday night that the Jets defense is one of the elite units in the league. Now, Dallas's defense is also one of the elite units in the league, and I would assume we're going to see at least one turnover from Zach Wilson. But I think the Jets defense can give Dak Prescott and that Cowboys offense pro- I, I don't think it'll be easy to run on the Jets defense. I, I think the Jets secondary will confuse and give Dak Prescott problems. I had three, three turnovers from Josh Allen the other night. And they've done a great job keeping him in check. So like, Dallas only had 265 yards in that game against yeah. the Giants. They had two non-offensive touchdowns. So it wasn't like this... this Offense was going up and down the field on on a bad Giants team. So now you face a really good defense. And I just think it's awful what happened to to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And we kind of forecast it last week when I talked about how I was <laughs> well, I, I had been more optimistic and more excited about this Jet season than I had been in a long, long time. And I said, Oh, by the way, that was 1999 when Vinny Testaverde tore his Achilles in early in the game against the England, and the rest is history. And unfortunately, it happened again. But I think there's a little bit of uh, an overreaction in this line because I think it was three and a half, maybe going in going into the into week one. Yeah. And then look ahead, and now you're getting close to ten. Yep. Like you know, maybe the maybe Wilson does implode against Parsons in that pass rush. But but at the same time, I it would not surprise me at all to see this game be 17-13 going yeah. into the fourth quarter and and the Jets are, are right in it just because of how good Hall and Cook ran on, on Monday night and how good that defense is. And I think the de- what I'm concerned about with this, the Jets are is if you're a member of the defense and you're in a 17-13 yeah. game every week and you're losing games. 14 9 like at some point is there going to be a mutiny in that locker room because there was last year there was last year because zach wilson did not take blame for his responsibility right i mean players understand if guys are going to play bad but then they just want us to say like hey man i played bad like sorry right. like my fault and zach wilson was like no nah, not my fault and <laughs> everyone got upset with him there um i the thing about nine half points as you mentioned it's a lot of points it's a lot of points i mean think about all the outcome 24 17 would, would that surprise you no. the final score like i think that's why you take the points in situation the thing about defense is interesting so i've always felt that defense has a tougher time 
being good through 60 minutes when the offense doesn't help versus vice versa, right? Like our job on offense is to score, score, score. Mm -hmm. score. We're fine just continuing to score. Yeah, it stinks when your defense allows 32 points, you got to score 35. It's tough on defense when your offense can't give you anything. Yes. And I always worry about in these games, you know, it's 17-10 Cowboys. Um, you know, there's three minutes left in the game. The defense is just gassed. They're tired. And the Cowboys just bust out a long run and I'm covering the game. But nine and a half is a ton of points. I, I think I'm with you here with the Jets. Let's get to your last game of the week here. Divisional matchup, Baltimore Ravens, one and zero off a win against the, the Texans. That was the number was bigger than the game actually yes. played. Uh, they're on the road at Cincinnati. Cincinnati favored by three and a half year total. 46 and a half. Bengals looked bad last weekend, losing to the Browns, but maybe weather was involved. Burrow coming back off injury. They started slow last season as well. Who you got here? I'm I'm gonna lay the points with Cincinnati here. Yeah. I'm gonna lay the three, the, the three, three and a half here. Uh you're, you're, Baltimore, I just I'm not sure that Lamar is gonna work what everybody how everybody thinks he's gonna work in this offense. Like I, I didn't think he was as much of a runner as maybe he should be. I'm not sold on the wide receiver core. Dobbins being out, I think, is is a big loss yeah. for them. And, and I think it's more of a play on the Bengals, on this spot, on this team, who you just kind of have to trust here, that team that's had incredible success the last couple of years, whether some of it's been in close games, maybe they've had a lot of injury luck as well, and they fell into a, right, a, a lot of right situations. But Burrow didn't play the entire offseason, entire exhibition preseason. I, I, we're not supposed to call it exhibition. I just remembered that preseason football, not, not training exhibition, camp. Yeah, training camp. There you so, go. so Burrow was gone. Of course he was going to be a little rusty. Of course the offensive line was going to struggle with him back there. So I, I will just lay the three and a yeah. half here with Cincinnati and, and, and take my chance. If the Bengals happen to, to lose at home, I'm also holding on to a little Bengals to miss the playoff ticket, which is in a Bengals season win total under. But I think this is a good an opportunity to, to – to get maybe a little bit of a reduced number on a team that lost last week and maybe the market might be a little more down on than they should be. Do you ever make wagers looking at your futures? Like you just mentioned, like, okay, well, yes. I'm taking the, you do. And he, here's how I, how I mean that maybe not a like regular season type game, but there was an instance a couple of years ago when Alabama played Georgia in the sec championship game where I had a Georgia to, I think it was Georgia to win the SEC at a certain number. And then I wound up taking Alabama to make the playoff and during the SEC championship game at a plus number because it was just a clean, like, yeah. either Georgia was going to win the SEC and I was going to get plus 320 for whatever they were yeah. in the SEC, or Alabama was going to win and make the playoff and I was going to get plus whatever. And you hit both. And, I, and you wound up. Well, no, this was the year Georgia beat them in the SEC. Okay. Alabama beat Georgia in the SEC championship game. Then Georgia beat them in Indianapolis in the national title game. So I, I wind up okay. catching the Alabama to make the playoff ticket, which actually worked out, I think, a little bit better the way the way I bet it than, than if I just would have had the – so, yes, I, I do consider some of the future wagers that I have made uh, at certain times with certain wagers. Well, let's recap your four wagers so far. Remember, we're going to have uh, the best bet to end the show here. Uh, you have uh, the Broncos laying three and a half at home against the Commanders. You have Chicago plus three on the road at Tampa Bay. Your New York Jets, Zach Wilson plus nine and a half whew, at the Cowboys. And you end with the Bengals here laying three and a half at home. Divisional matchup against the Ravens. Bengals looking to avenge a loss in week one. We cover a lot more of these games. We cover what happens to our wagers now with Aaron Rodgers being out for the Jets. We do all that in the gambling group chat. It's going to be the Bear, me, Sammy, and Will Hill. Stay tuned for that. Gambling group chat is back. Will, Sammy P, Jeff, myself, I'm a little somber today. Uh, obviously, the biggest news of week one is the end of the New York football Jets season. Will, I would like to offer my sincere condolences on the 89 to one Cowboys Jets Super Bowl prop matchup that was extremely live. This, that Jets defense is real. And uh, they deserve that night. They deserve the win. It was good to see a little bit of uh, positivity and smiles on their face. But for all intents and purposes, the year is over. So I'm not going to lament on that anymore. But I do wonder if any of you see a bet that might have been triggered or was triggered in, in the lieu of the. Uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, being out for the year now for the Jets. Is there something you guys immediately hopped on or are still thinking about? 
Will? First of all, I mean, we're, we're what, three days later? I still can't believe it happened like that. Like, we talked last week about how the, the similarities with Testaverde and all the hope, and for four plays in, it's just, I'm still stunned. I, I'm still just so depressed. It was It's so bad for the sport because it was such a great storyline. And, man, I think it makes it worse that they won the game because it shows just how good the team is, how good the roster is, and how little they need out of the quarterback. Uh, that being said, in, in terms of a bet, if they can somehow get to nine wins, whether it's with Wilson and get in the playoffs or they, tr- you know, trade for Tannehill in a month or Kirk cousins, if they can somehow get in the playoffs, there will be a narrative that Salah held this team together and overcame all of this adversity. Uh, there'll be a little bit of a sympathy vote. It will be a great narrative. They haven't made the playoffs in forever, which helps with these things. So Salah at 14, 15 to one to win coach of the year. Uh, if you're going to bet him plus 200 to make the playoffs or, or in that neighborhood, I think Salah coach of the year is a better bet. Maybe sprinkle and split, split your bet that way, but that would be the bet I would look at. Man, you are so right with that. And that makes me terrified because I'm sitting here holding a McDaniel ticket and <laughs> what Tua did last week. I mean, Tua made some throws this year that he never made last year, especially that go route uh, with the game on the line in the second half. Tua and McDaniel and Hill and Waddle are on to something special here. But now you're you're totally right. If Salah can get them the nine or ten wins, he probably wins coach of the year. Now I heard Jeff's list of quarterbacks for the Jets. It was like Joey Harrington, Mariota, and Josh Johnson, right? <laughs> All former Jets, right? All quack, quack, quack. Um, I like I feel like this is not gonna be popular here, but I they still have a top five defense in New York. They've got the running backs, they have the receivers. Is plus two and a quarter to make the playoffs a bad bet? I I don't know, man. Yeah, they have to play uh, the 2009 version of it with Sanchez, yeah. So here's the thing about Jets making the playoffs, right? Let, let's kind of count the AFC teams, right? So you have Chiefs, let's say Bengals, Jaguars, and you have the Dolphins, right? Well, Buffalo is probably making the playoffs too. And someone from the NFC, uh, AFC North, let's use Baltimore. Well, is, are the Jets in over the Chargers now? Like, like who are the Jets That's in the thing. over then, right? Because who who are they going to take the place of? Herbert's making the playoffs. I know I don't, I don't trust the Chargers ever, but they're going to be a <laughs> playoff team, right? I mean, like, w- what if Russell Wilson sort of turns it around and Denver becomes a playoff S team? Like, it, I just don't see the spot for the Jets to make the playoffs with Zach Wilson. And they're going to stick with him. There's no answer out there. I've seen the list right. of, of quarterbacks. None of them are going to do the job. You have Zach Wilson there. He's been in this offense. Now, unfortunately, it's an, it's an Nathaniel Hackett offense. And, you know, his technique for having those tackles cut didn't really help Aaron Rodgers there very much. But you, you, he's just, he's there. He's been in the offense. And you just hope to simple things down, have your defense win games, and try to eliminate the mistakes from Wilson. And you just ride with him. And so, in the wake of that, New England's win total went down to six and a half after they lost the Eagles. And they played much better in the second half of that game. If you turned it off after the first quarter, you saw a bad Patriots team. They looked. Pretty good the second half of that game. I would bet they're over now because that's the they're going to beat Zach Wilson twice now, and that changes. Well, they beat like, him what fourteen? Yeah, I think fourteen games in a row. They beat yeah. something, something so like that. So I, I think the Patriots over six and a half wins now is a much better play. It was seven and a half now six and a half after one loss, and that now counts really two wins against the Jets. They could find five other wins in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would think so, and and that's the thing. Like, if you were going through and you were Patriots over better. You weren't banking on them beating the Eagles in week one. So you were kind of counting on that as a loss anyway. So now you kind of, you got to, I want to say it's a free roll, but basically, okay, a game that you expected them to lose anyway, and now you're getting a reduced price. I actually like that. I, I, look, maybe I was prisoner of the moment a little bit as well, but I may, I immediately jumped on the Dolphins at plus 140 to win the division uh, just good. because the best team in the division, the Bills, suffered a loss. Uh, and I think in, with the Dolphins going on the road and getting a win against uh, San Diego, or, the Chargers, <laughs> I, I did it. That's two weeks in a two row weeks now. In a row, they're they're always San Diego. But but here's the thing: it's not that the Bills lost; it's it's why they lost, right? It's Josh Allen again, sort of regressing back to what he was before Brian Dable is now the coach of the Giants. Was there, right? I mean, Brian Dable left obviously the end of of 2022, really 2021 season, but 2022 and now to 23, Josh Allen's gotten worse. He can't he can't keep the ball from the other team. He's making these YOLO plays. He still has incredible arm talent and is really good. Good. The Dolphins, though, they went on the road. They beat a playoff team without their left tackle, and Tua was making plays he had not made previously. He looks to be a better quarterback this season. We saw last season, if he stays healthy, 
They win a lot of football games. Vic Fangio's calling the defense now. The Dolphins win that division, I think, looks much better after week one because Josh Allen, who we thought maybe got over the, you know, because some of the issues from last season, looks exactly the same. And the things that bothered Buffalo last year, like rushing the passer, really weren't much better. I mean, I know they hit Aaron Rodgers early on, but that's more of a function of the offensive design than it is like them being great pass rushers. So to me, I, I'd be concerned if you have a Buffalo ticket right now to win the division. Sammy P. Good call with uh, Tyreek Hill. The 20-something to one, you're off to a, uh, a good start there for Offensive Player of the Year on that on my man. Well, and, and 150 to one for MVP. I don't think that's going to happen. We've never seen an MVP go to a wide receiver. We've seen a, a receiver win a Heisman. But, I mean, if he gets 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns, he, he probably should win MVP. <laughs> it's a good bet. I think it's just going to go right next to all the other bets on the CLV shelf in my house. That's probably going to be it. <laughs> I got a um, bunch of those. <laughs> Oh man, it sucks so bad when you bet 150 to one and the guy goes to like 10 to one and then you lose. Um, let me quickly say this though. This is a good time for any of you who like the favorites. Think about the three teams that lost this week, Kansas city, Buffalo, Cincinnati, all zero and one, which means their super bowl price kind of eat up. You can get the chiefs at seven to one. You can get the bills at 11. You can get the Bengals at 15 to one. They are all still going to be in the conversation to go to the super bowl. Sammy, yeah. I'm just a little disappointed because I know you will. You and I are holding a Bengals to miss the playoff ticket. So I think that's kind of the – it's something that pe people might not think about, like you know, who's going to make the playoffs now. But at the same time, people like Will and I who had a Bengals ticket to miss the playoffs, like like, like that that probably uh, it gets a little bit of a ding as well because now what are the teams they're going to be competing with for a playoff spot? Jets now likely out. Will, sorry. Yeah, that was going to be, uh, you know, a, a situation where, hey, the AFC is so good. They can't all make the playoffs. You're going to have one, maybe two or three really good teams that we just sort of penciled in, missed the playoffs. Now with the Jets, that's, you know, it, it's not as strong, obviously, even though the Jets are still in the mix. Uh, if you look at Cincy, though, I mean, I mentioned last week how I, I like them for a season win under just because you look at the statistical profile yards per play, which is sort of a basic stat, but it, it does tell you some things uh, on offense. They were 5.4 last year on defense. They were 5.4. So uh, both middle of the pack. And if you really look and again, just a simple exercise of looking at the quarterbacks they beat. OK, they beat Mahomes. But other than that, it's really it's a lot of Anthony Brown, Tyler Huntley. Uh, Baker Mayfield. There Mariota, you go. Now you're, now you're killing mean, Oregon quarterbacks. Jeez, the Oregon <laughs> slander today is off the charts. Hey, if you slide down at the one, maybe we take like, it easy I don't on like you. But AB to, either. It's fine. Yeah, no, but they. I mean, look, they didn't beat good quarterbacks last year. So, uh, look, I mean, who knows if Burrow's really completely healthy? He made some comments in the press conference of like, hey, you know, in terms of scrambling, I have to take it easier. I have to watch what I do, something like that. He didn't have a training camp, so uh, we'll see. In, in terms of uh, Cincy, that's a big game this week early on versus the uh, versus the Ravens here. Yeah, we, we talked. We threw a couple of futures around out there as well. Is Jalen Carter to win uh, rookie defensive rookie of the year at what three seventy five? Is that a bad bet, or is that still something that you think? might be worth playing because if he, if he continues to play like he did in the opener, like that number is going to continue to drop, right? Anyone? Absolutely. Jeff, yeah. Thank you. Yes. No, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I, I think Carter and because the, the attention that he, that he gets playing for the Eagles, obviously, but also his backstory, he's going to continue to be in the, the, the narrative, right? Cause each week we're going to say, I can't believe nine teams pass on Jalen Carter, right? I mean, the Eagles got him at, at, at a very good, uh, you know, a very good draft slot. And again, they'll keep pumping him up, pumping up, pumping him up. And so, and they win a lot of football games. You, you know, the rookie year obviously typically comes from someone who uh, a team that wins a lot of games. I think it's a great wager. I don't know. Cause right now, who else is leading right now? Well, it's not Will Anderson on a bad Texans team. Christian Gonzalez is one of my favorites on new England, but he's probably not going to get enough attention for that. Jalen Carter is going to get all the attention for this award. A lot of primetime yeah, games too. Well, like Tyree Wilson be on the field either. I mean, Wilson's already having some some ankle stuff in in Vegas. Van Ness probably not going to get the run. Jack Campbell. No. I mean, these are guys that are good players, but they're not the best rookies on that side of the wall. Last week we were talking about how the NFL is probably very little more difficult than grinding out a profit in the NFL in the betting space. And I think if you look at this week's slate of NFL games, it clearly gives the reason why like there are so many of these games that are lined with, with, with a field goal or so or, or, or a favorite getting steamed up a bunch like I, I there are a bunch of games that I want absolutely no part of but I, I think Miami New England is probably the game that I want the least part of because you got New England who could be a very live dog but on the other on the other end you got Miami who 
last week looked unbelievable. Went on the road with that, as Jeff was saying, without an offensive line starter, and, and they beat the Chargers. So, like, a lot of games out there I think you need to be careful of. Uh, Sammy, is there any one in particular that you might think might be a little more of a landmine than others? Yeah, if you think I'm laying two and a half with the Buccaneers, you are out of your freaking mind. There is no <laughs> chance that is happening. There is not a soul that thought the Buccaneers were going to get out of the cellar in the NFC South, right? Oh, maybe they'll win four games, and now they are favored against a Chicago team that I, I understand. Chicago did not look great, but Chicago was also in the game for like – 35 minutes, right? They're down 10 to six at half. And then they had a pick six. And then it was just, it, it got away from Chicago quickly. I think they're going to make some changes offensively. They're going to have to skip uh, script things differently for fields and company, but there is no world where I am laying two and a half points with the bucks at home in a game that really should be a coin flip or bears minus one. You, you are, you aren't impressed with the bucks, 3.6 yards per play and being out gained by 130 yards and plus three, you don't think that's sustainable? No. Uh, Everyone is going to wager on the giants this week in Arizona. And I would just advise you not to do that. (laughs) Um, They're favored by five and a half right now. Um, Again, I I made this point a lot, guys. Um, Arizona is trying to lose games, right? But you try to lose games Monday through Saturday on Sunday, the players and coaches are trying to win games, right? That's their job on Sunday is to play hard and win a football game. You, you take by having a bad roster, which Arizona does, but they played hard on Sunday. We saw them play hard. They're going to come back home and play hard again. The Giants obviously need to win, guys, but the Giants have problems, right? D- Daniel Jones looks like Daniel Jones. That, that's a little bit of a problem. Their offensive line is an issue. Their left tackle probably out this game. Like I think Arizona here, I'm not putting my money in Arizona, but if you're putting your money on the Giants minus five and a half bear on the road against Arizona after that game on Sunday night, I I, I couldn't do it. No, I, I think you're right, Jeff. I, I think you, if you looked at the Giants last year, like they were much closer to being seven and seven and ten, eight and nine, than 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 than, than a playoff team with a winning record in Brian Dayball, Will Hill. Coach of the year. So I, I agree with you, Jeff. I'd be very careful about laying laying the points with the Giants this week. Yeah, and I would say to Sammy's point, keep in mind season win totals because it's not that long ago that we had all all you know all spring all summer to bet Bears over seven and a half or under seven and a half, and Tampa was six and a half. So now we're saying that Tampa's is better team. So that that you know enhances that uh, confirms Sammy's point here, where uh, the Bears probably shouldn't be getting points. To that same line of thinking. Uh, Seattle and Detroit. I mean, Seattle was around nine for season wins. Detroit was nine and a half. So, okay, Detroit's slightly better, but now they're laying six. Uh, and again, uh, I, I'm not a big trend guy, but one trend I do like an 0 and one team getting points against a one and O team. There's an overreaction built into that market usually because one team won, the other team lost. And there's a desperation. These 0 and one teams do not want to be 0 and two. It's not as bad as it used to be where now you have a 17th game. Now you have a seventh uh, playoff team. But 0-2 used to be an absolute death sentence. It's still a bad position to be in. So I like playing on, on these 0-1 teams that are getting points against 1-0 teams. Yeah, now we're laying 5.5 with the would? Lions, right? Like that's what we're really laying 5.5 with the Lions in week number two. That's where we are right. as a society. The only problem is, and pay attention, all you that bet the NFL, you have to pay attention to these injury reports. The Seahawks lost both offensive tackles. Cross and Lucas, yes. and it doesn't oh, sure. sound like they're looking good for Sunday. If they are down left tackle and right tackle, that's a different conversation. Good point. It, it is with, with, with Hutchinson and the uh, the, Lions, the Lions front there. But I'm actually looking at the numbers now. This thing's actually come down to four and a half. So it's one of those wow. kind of everyone kind of was on Detroit, but the numbers coming down kind of deal. That's a uh, that's some interesting movement as, as I look across here. Four four and a half and a and then there's a five at South Point out, out there as well. But a four and a half. That dead zone. Everywhere, everywhere else. And, yeah, exactly. Anyone else want to yell at me for taking the Jets plus nine and a half against Dallas? No, no, uh, I like that. I, I, I just wouldn't put my money on Zach Wilson, but you do you, buddy. I just, I, I, I. Look, the Cowboys, you had two non-offensive touchdowns. Oh, I know. I, it, yeah. It's look, Josh Allen, the Jets were able to force him into a bunch of turnovers. Yeah, a couple of stupid plays, yep. but. Why can't Dak Prescott do the same thing? Jets defense sure. run like would, would, it, would it surprise anybody if you looked up in the in the fourth quarter and this was 17-10 Dallas and you're you're hanging on for dear life plus nine and a half? I could see that possibly happening, but I just I, Zach Wilson thing terrifies me on the road against a really active defense. 
like the Cowboys have. That, that defense is real. Like, I know they they got some points against the Giants, but that defense, Jets defense is good. So is the Cowboys defense. And I, I wouldn't put money on the Cowboys, though, either. How many people this week, guys, are going to put money on the Rams at home against the 49ers? That'd be a big mistake in my Zero. opinion. Zero. Because the number, the number is seven and a half now. It was, I think, eight and a half. Um, and the Rams, guys, I, I know they won that game against Seattle. Um, but the Niners are going to come in there, and they're going to wreck shop. It's going to be a bad day for the Rams. It's a great teaser I, I think week. I would like to – yeah, I, I would like to say, uh, Jeff, you were high on Pittsburgh. Oh, uh, mon, 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 uh, Sunday, <sighs> Sunday was not a good afternoon. I, I – don't want to show the not safe for work text that my wife had sent me during the, <laughs> during the game when she was out as well. But now, now the, the the Browns are going on the road. We've talked about the Browns last week. They're my best bet. We, Sammy, you loved the Browns last week as well. Will, you did. We were all on the Browns. And now you're laying two and a half on the road. Kind of that 1-0 and versus 0-1 division thing. Before we get to the game, I want to ask Jeff a favor. Yes. Is Wyatt Teller your favorite player in the National Football he, League? He might be now after week one, yeah. Yeah. Every time I see you with, with a spoon and a video in your hand, yeah. it's usually about Wyatt Teller and he's a, he's blocking incredible. someone 15 yards that was a, That was a heck of a block. I, the Browns offensive line is a lot of fun to watch. The Steelers offensive line, unfortunately, Bear, was not fun to watch on Sunday. And this is the question I have about some of these games, right? Is like, how much do you overreact to week one? I was high on the Steelers all offseason. The Niners defense destroyed the Steelers offensive line. Now they're playing a Browns defensive line. That is not as good as the Niners, but sort of just as good as the Niners. Their overall defense isn't as good. And do you take that first week reaction of, of, oh boy, this is really bad? And does that carry over into week two? And can you not bet the Steelers now because I don't trust their offensive line? That's one of the hardest parts about the NFL is overreacting to one game when you sort of have an opinion about them. And we go, I, I, I can't bet the Steelers. I, I, their offensive line really struggled. And the Browns' defensive line, I think, is going to hit Kenny Pickett a bunch. And that's going to be a problem. Well, why don't you do this then, Jeff? Why don't you tease Pittsburgh up? I mean, that's really I like, like that. my favorite thing to do in week two is to take advantage of the teams that nobody wants to bet and just add six points and, and obviously shop around. You don't want to lay 140 on teaser. Some places let you lay 120, one and a quarter. But like, how about Pittsburgh plus eight and a half with Chicago plus nine? Like, how does that lose? I mean, obviously it could lose, but I don't think the Bucs <laughs> are going to beat the Bears by 10. And I don't think the, the Browns are going to go on the road and and what Pittsburgh with a Tomlin team that's already 0-1. So I, I agree with you. I could I could sense the hesitancy to take two and a half with Pittsburgh, but if you knock them through the seven and the uh, the three and the seven, that's a much better wager for me. Totally agree. I, agree. I mean, so many of these games in. are just so close, so random. You know, 23-20, somebody with five minutes to go, you just want the eight and a half. You don't care who wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Plinko. Right. Okay, exactly. gentlemen. Hey, before we let before before we let you go, do we do we cover everything? Is there anything else you guys are itching to get out there? Are we sure Rogers is hurt? He's definitely hurt. Can we get a second opinion? Something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who, who's who? Who are we gonna get a Maybe the Jets will have like Carson Wentz one quarter, Keys Keenum one. Oh They'll God, trade wow. James for James for a quarter and then send him back to the world. Like. Enough with the Jets' backup quarterback talk. Like, it doesn't matter. It's, Zach Wilson is, unfortunately, their guy, and they're going to uh, they're gonna go 6-11 and 11 or whatever it is with them. And I love people, like, so talking about, hey, the good, the good news is they get their first-round pick again oh. next year. Oh, so gosh. why? Who cares? You want to go to the playoffs and maybe win the division, have a shot at the Super Bowl, or you want to you wanna pick 26? Yeah. Just enough. Okay. I, I promised I wasn't going to lament enough a, anymore on this, but I am. I think it's a good time to end this discussion right now. Everybody have a great weekend. Appreciate the uh, the convo, and we'll uh, hopefully catch some tickets. I love those guys. We, we, we just have so much fun and just kick around a bunch of different different ideas and different bets, and we can all make fun of each other, and Will and I can go share an adult beverage at some point this week in Connecticut <laughs> over our, over our lo lost Jets wagers, but – Something I don't love right now is Survivor because last week we sat here and we warned you about, about Washington, yes. and then we were right about that. However, the team that I ultimately settled on for Survivor, the Seattle Seahawks, decided to lose both tackles in the game and make Tutu Atwell and Pukunukua, Pukunukua, Rookie of the Year, Pukunukua, yeah. Rookie of the Year, make them look like uh, Hall of Fame wide receivers. So my, my, my Survivor pools are, were carnage last week as a result. However, as a public service to everybody, I'm going to continue to go through the process. I do, I do have one entry left, so I'm going to 
obviously still continue to do this and I love Survivor and you can certainly rebuy in a couple of uh, Survivor pools as well. So this week, it's, it's an interesting week because I think the game that I'm treading carefully on this week and that I think people might be attracted to based on some of the line movement, I think is Detroit. Like, are the mm. Lions as good? What, what the Lions did in Kansas City, I think people are going to expect them to like live up to that level every week. And while... Cross and the other tackle might be out for the Seahawks, and the secondary looked terrible. Like, Geno was bad. Like, they have to be better than they were last week, right? Now, like, now you're yes. you're laying and you're going on the road, and everyone's sky high about the Lions. They're a Super Bowl contender. I, I don't know. I'd be careful here. If the Lion, if Kadarius Tony catches that pass and the Chiefs win at the end of that game. We're not talking about the lines like this, which is silly, right? Because it's the point of it's watching point. football games is to, is to see what happens and then analyze that, not always look at the final score, right? And so I'm with you on this one. I think Seattle probably covers this game as well. I would not pick the Lions. Now, and I think there's the other, like, there's a, a school of thought out there. A lot of people are just fading Arizona every week. And while that may work, this I think it's kind of another risk reward type pick this week with the Giants, because if you do take the Giants and they do win, and I think a lot of people are going to take the Giants, uh, you, you'll, you'll get rid of a bad team and you move on. But again, a lot of people don't like taking road teams. Certainly people don't like taking teams that lost 40 to nothing the week before. Um, teams that have problems on the offensive line. Um, teams that might have problems at quarterback. At some point, I think this year, Arizona is going to knock a large portion of their survivor pool out. <laughs> Maybe this is the week, but again, if you're right and you do take the Giants, you're you're in a good position yeah. because you knocked out a bad team. How much of the survivor do you just say, look, week one was rough. Let's just take the Bills. Like, well, let's just guarantee ourselves. Not guarantee. Yeah. There's no guarantee in the NFL, but let's let's just take the Bills as their big home favorites. Like, let's just do it and and get a win and and not have to sweat something out. I think I think that is a a good school of thoughts, depending on how many entries you have left and depending on what you really need to do is figure out when you would use the bills. Is there a week that you really need to save the bills for? Because there are some like circus survivor you, uh, you need Thanksgiving is it's, is it's, is its own week. So you don't necessarily want to burn the Cowboys because the Cowboys play on Thanksgiving and you need to have options. You need to have outs for Thanksgiving. So some, some leagues, make you pick two games a week. So you're going to want to use a really good team that week. So again, it all, it all depends on how your league is ultimately formed in the rules. But I certainly would not be opposed to using the bills this week because I am not as high on the bills. I think as a lot of people were, and I would expect them to beat the Raiders at home this week. And maybe you don't necessarily want them later in the year when they play the yeah. dolphins or they play the Patriots or they play the Chiefs or whomever else. So we'll see. I ultimately landed on the Broncos. I talked about the reasons why I like the Broncos earlier in the show. Again, I, I just think it's more of a play against Washington. I don't yeah. think the commanders are are very good. And it's an opportunity, kind of like with the Giants, you, get, you, you burn a team that isn't one of the upper echelon teams in the league, and you're at home looking to avoid going 0-2 against a bad team. So I know the, the Washington defense is good. Yeah. But I'm I'm gonna land on 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 Denver here and hope that uh, they do get to two and zero. Denver feels far more desperate for a win than even the Chiefs or the Bengals. Like the Chiefs and Bengals, if they lose this weekend and they go zero and two, you still wouldn't change your opinion about their no. capability to win the Super Bowl or even just make the playoffs. If the Broncos start zero and two, it's like it's more of the same. Up. Oh, that same Broncos as last season, and they lose to a bad Washington team. I'm with you on, on Denver. I think it's a good play here on your survivor. But let's get to your four wagers you made so far. Then we'll get to our best bets of the week. Just to remind everyone that Bear has the Broncos and the survivor, but also the Broncos here laying the three and a half at home against the Commanders. You have the Bears. I got the Bears plus three Bears there. Bears plus three against Tampa Bay there. That's uh, the, yeah, the Bears plus three. Uh, you have the Jets uh, with uh, getting nine and a half points. Zach Wilson on the road against the Cowboys off the Cowboys big victory. And then you have uh, the Bengals there minus three and a half against the Ravens. All right, let's get to your best bet, which hit last weekend, hoping to go. It's 2-0 to start the season. Well, I have to give you a little hat tip here because when we were discussing uh, best bets uh, prior to the show, you, you had the, some numbers up and you found the Rams team total of 18 and a half for me, which is uh, the best price that I found. So I'm going to go under 
18 and a half Rams Love versus it. 49ers team total. Last last year, the Rams scored 23 points in two games against the 49ers. They are going to find the, the 49ers, the defense, much more resistant to throwing on than what they saw in Seattle last week. It also isn't going to hurt that the 49ers and that offense are going to control the ball, short passes, run the ball against a really weak Los Angeles Rams defense. So everything kind of went right for the Rams last week. I don't think anything's going to go right for the Rams this week. I don't know if I'd lay in a half or whatever it is with, with the, uh, with the Niners, but I do think that the, uh, the Rams are going to struggle to score points. So uh, I found we, we, you found that 18 and a half was, for yeah. me. So I'm going to go 18 and a half under that Rams team total. I love that wager so much. It, it, it's a great opportunity to fade a Rams team that play well last weekend with, you mentioned Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell. Right? BYU's like, used Puka Nakua. Yeah. Um, formerly of Cal. He's a, he's a Pac-12 guy, too. I forget where, where he was at before that. Tutu Atwell? No, uh, Pukunakua. BYU. BYU, yeah. He's being Tutu Atwell's Louisville. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right, let's get to my my best bet of the week. Uh, I'm going here with the Packers, and now a pick em at Atlanta That there. surprises me. I, 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 I don't get that. Did people watch the Falcons last week? The Falcons won 24-10. The game was 17-10 with four minutes left. The Falcons had 13 offensive first downs, 221 yards, and they were two for 10 on third down. And they were plus three in turnovers. They were facing a rookie quarterback for the first time. The Panthers offense line played pretty well. The Packers are a real football team. Like, they're a really good roster, and they need Jordan Love to do what he did last weekend. Just hit the open guys. Like, don't do too much. Don't make mistakes. The running game for the Packers wasn't great last weekend, but the Packers are like a real football team with a real coach who wins. Matt LaFleur has won like 75% of his football games. Like, he, like they win a lot of football games. I just think Atlanta is as good as they looked against the Panthers, which wasn't very good. So I got Packers here, and, and it's now to pick them. I'm taking minus one as well, um, but I'm going Packers here for my best wager. You know, I, 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 do, I do like that, that pick as well. I need to put up my Super Contest picks, and that might be, that might be one of them on what is a really rough-looking NFL slate. It's a rough looking slate. I feel like how many weeks of the year are you like, man, that's good NFL slate? <laughs> I feel like for super contest. Well, you, look forward to why, picks, you look forward to watching it. I'll but watch we'll, it. Yeah. But betting it's f- finding five for the super contest. Any contest you're in, which there's other contests that you that you can do on. I'm in I'm in a couple. I'm in one that's I'm in one that's seven between mm-hmm. college and pro. Yeah, but that I played that before. That one's fun though, because you can put college in there. And then. last week and last year, the the William Hill college football contest, which is no longer, it used to be like eight picks a week, which is college, but not pro. But imagine yeah, you can't pick you can't pick eight pro games a week. That's that would be forget that that's an absolute losing problem. Eight pro games? So. No, there's no chance you could do that. No way. You would you'd be so four struggle, four best I struggle to get four this week. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think I have five. I, most weeks I barely have five to get to. So, uh, but those are our best bets. Hoping to win again for you guys this week. We know Bear won last week. I unfortunately had the Steelers last weekend. So, hopefully it was a little bit better this week. <laughs> yeah, it was not. It was not a uh, a good a good uh, a good Sunday in the Felica household as we uh, discussed <laughs> last week. Happy wife, happy life. It was not a happy wife nor a happy life last Sunday as uh, my wife Steelers went down hard to the 49ers. but. What, what, what do we got? Do we got, do we got a little, little contest here with the Fox Sports, a little we, Super 6? We have the little, Fox, little, little uh, fun. the free Fox Super 6 game. We're, we're doing it this week, back for the entire season. It's not too late to play the Fox Super 6. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Just remember, you can win the money by playing Fox Super 6 for free on the Fox Sports app. Play for week two. We have six questions for you, Bear. You're going to have to give us an answer for all these to There's play. A little, a little gambling slash fantasy yeah. Hybrid. I it, like it. It goes together here. Okay. The first one. And oh, there. by the way, it's free. It is free. And, and you can win money, which is good to do. Winning money for free. Better oh, than losing these money. questions. All right. You ready, Bear? I am here ready. Here we go. What will be the outcome of this game? The New York Giants win by six or more points, or Arizona win or lose by five points or fewer? Uh, I'm, I have to take the Giants just because what you saw from Arizona, like, like they, Washington tried to give them that game. And Arizona wouldn't take it, and Washington still won the game by by more than they won that game by by six or more. So I think the Giants, as bad as they were last week, I don't think the Giants are great. I think the regression from last year's success, the close win luck, the turnover luck that they had, I think that's obviously going to reverse itself this year. But in this game, I would think the Giants can win by a touchdown. I'm I'm generally with you on that one. Arizona is is, is not very good. The Giants have to have a bounce back. They absolutely have to. All right, now question number two. Which quarterback will throw for the most passing yards? Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, 
Jared Goff or Geno Smith? Well, it's hard to like lock yourself into an outdoor game because you just don't know about weather sitting here right now on Thursday as we're recording this. But did you see that Seattle defense last week? Yeah. It's in, in, in indoors. I think the Lions have some weapons. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Give me Jared Goff. Jared Goff there. Okay. Number three. What are the quarterbacks who have the most rushing yards from highest to lowest? There's four of them right here. A correct pick. Four correct picks, you get 10 points, by the way. Two, you get four, and one, you get you get two. So let's, let's hope for four here. Anthony Richardson, Colts quarterback. Justin Fields, the Bears quarterback. Josh Allen, Buffalo's quarterback, who missed, by the way, his number by half a, half a yard last yeah, weekend. That's that, was, that was a rough one there. And Lamar Jackson, quarterback of the, of the Ravens here. Uh, who you got uh, from most uh, highest to lowest. I'm going to go Josh Allen just because I think we saw him struggle throwing the ball last week. And I think so much of their offense is him running. So I think he'll have a big game on the ground against okay. the Raiders. So I'm going to go Allen, but I'm going to Justin Fields. I think the Bears will address their offensive play, just their play calling a little bit against the uh, the Bucks down in Tampa. I'll go Justin Fields too. Uh, Anthony Richardson, I'll go third. I, he was a little, he got, dinged up a little bit in that game. So maybe they're a little more hesitant uh, cause, with him running the ball. And then Lamar Jackson against a team that they're, uh, that the, uh, is familiar with Lamar and his running. And we'll see how that offense kind of evolves. I, I don't think Munkin's offense is really a, uh, a quarterback run type offense. So I will Allen Fields, Richardson, Jackson. All right, let's get to which team will allow the fewest points. Question number four here, the lions against the Seahawks, no. the Texans against the Colts, the Colts against the Texans or the Giants at the Cardinals. This is the most points. Fewest points. Who fewest, fewest points. points. Number four. Question number four. You see the Cardinals offense last week. <laughs> you see Josh Dobbs at quarterback. You, you see their absolute ineptness moving the ball. It's it's gotta it's gotta be the card. Like I'm surprised. The Giants, that, you mean Giants defense? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm surprised that the Giants defense offers. The biggest bang for the buck, point wise. There, you get eight points. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's a why it's a uh, a road team. Maybe I don't know. And then maybe the fact that the Giants gave up forty, but it was two of those touchdowns were not offensive, and a couple of them were after the game were long decided. Yeah, give me the give me the Giants defense against the Cardinals. There. And question number five: Order the receivers by who will have the most receiving yards from highest to lowest. We have Mike Evans for Tampa Bay, Take Amon Ross St. Brown for the Lions, mm-hmm. Puka Nakua. For the Rams, guy. Brandon Ayuk, who, who had an incredible oh. block on the Christian McCaffrey yes, touchdown. Oh, it was beautiful. It got spoon treatment for me. I know. Uh, highest to lowest here for the four wide receivers. Maybe that could be a new segment in this pod, spoon treatment. So I'm, we, I'm in. Is there a way we can work that into the show? It's your show, buddy. It's just bare yeah. bets. So you can do whatever you want. But you, your, your picture's I'm, there I as well. I luckily got on, yes. I will go. I'm going to St. Brown. Okay. I, 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 think we, I, talked about, I talked about with Goff. And how I think the Seattle pass defense is terrible. So I will go him, number one. I think Ayuk will have another big game. But the trouble picking him number one here is that there's so many options yes. in that 49ers offense. Like, it's going to be a different guy every week. Mike Evans against with Baker Mayfield as his quarterback. Like, that could be trouble. Not, I don't think he's going to have a massive year with that. Uh, and then Puka Nakua, I'm going to put him last only because I think the circumstances of this game, yeah, they are going to be behind, but I think the Niners defense is so good. And I think the Niners will have a big time of possession advantage as well. So go Brossem Brown, Ayuk, Evans, Nakua. I'm picking on Marcy Brown this year. I hope he, hope he pulls through for you here. Uh, what will be the outcome of this game? Question number six here. Uh, Seattle win or lose by five points or fewer. The Lions winning by six. I, I think we've made our, our, stance on this game known <laughs> all throughout the, the, the pod. Give me the Seahawks plus the points here. I, I think it's a good chance to maybe uh, fade the, the Lions off of a, a little bit of an inflated value. And the tiebreaker, what will be the final score of the Seahawks-Lions game? What do you got for us, Bear? Ah, time, final score. We have to go on the spot here. Hmm. Let's go... 31-28 Lions. 31-28 Lions. All right. Lots of points. Yeah. Last year, they had lots of points in this game as well. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. I think anyone who plays the Seahawks this year are going to get lots of points. Well, that is Bears Fox Super 6 
entries for this week. Remember, just download the Fox Sports app right now. Make your picks. You can win a share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. We need to tag team on this one from now from now on. I'm in. I need to take three. You need to take three. Okay, I'm in. Let's do that. This, this, is, this is a democracy. We're, 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 uh, we're hey man, just let me. I'm in. Hope we could do like offensive line pancakes per week. Oh, we 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 gotta create that. We know we we know people. We, One of those we, questions. We know people. We can make them create create. Does Wyatt for Teller them. have over under four and a half pancakes this week? <laughs> Hopefully he will for this week. For well, actually, I shouldn't say that. My wife is gonna listen, Ooh, and now she's gonna, now. now she's gonna think that I'm rooting for the Browns on yes. Monday night. So always fun, my man. Hopefully we'll have a. Uh, a few more winners than we did last week. Hopefully we both can get our best bets in. Thanks again to everybody for uh, for watching, listening uh, to Bear Bets. Make sure you subscribe, download, uh, watch on YouTube, every place where you uh, get all of your, 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 your podcasts. And make sure you check out our weekly column as well on foxsports.com. He's Jeff. I'm Bear. Talk to you again next week. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose, you win. When you win. I can't even get my line right these days. I'm so flustered over Aaron Rodgers.